Hello everyone. This video would focus on conic sections, specifically on hyperbola with center at zero, zero or at the point of origin. And this is the first part. In this part, we are given the standard equation of a hyperbola and we're supposed to sketch the graph of this equation and we're supposed to determine the values for each of these variables. Before we go further, please feel free to check out the description box below for the link of the other series of topics related to hyperbola with center at zero, zero. Before we jump into this example, let's have a review on the parts and the two cases of a hyperbola. Please notice that this hyperbola is called a horizontal hyperbola because the graph, which is in red, which is the hyperbola, is touching the horizontal axis. Now, these are the parts. The first part is the center. The center is located at 0, 0 or at the point of origin. Another part is the vertex. There are two of them. We call them as vertices. Another part is the transverse axis. The transverse axis is the line that connects the two vertices passing through the center. Another part is the covertex, and there are two of them. We call them as covertices. Another part is the conjugate axis. This is the line connecting the two covertices passing through the center. The next part is the focus. There are two of them. We call them as foci. Please remember that the focus is located to the side where the hyperbola or the branch of the hyperbola opens. Another part is the latus rectum. This is the line segment with endpoints on the hyperbola and it passes through the focus. And there are two of them for each side. The next part are the asymptotes. These are the two lines that form an X shape where the hyperbola approaches but never touches it. We call them again as asymptotes. The equation of the asymptote with a negative slope is Y equals negative B over A X, while the other asymptote with a positive slope is Y equals B over A X. Now, the easiest way to draw the asymptote is by drawing a rectangle covering the four points, the two vertices and the two covertices. And the two asymptotes are actually the diagonals of these rectangles extending outward of the rectangle. So that's a trick on how to approximately draw the two asymptotes. Now, let's look at some important lengths of hyperbola. The first is... The distance from the center to the vertex is represented as letter A. The distance from the center to the covertex is represented as letter B. While the distance from the center to the focus is represented as letter C. From here, we can go ahead and say that the length of the transverse axis that is from one vertex to the other vertex is a formula of 2a, while the length of the conjugate axis that is from one covertex to the other covertex is 2b. Now, the equation that relates all these three lengths here, a, b, and c, is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. We also have another quantity called eccentricity. Eccentricity is defined as the measure of how oval the hyperbola is. And the formula for the eccentricity is C over A. Now we remember that eccentricity for a hyperbola is always greater than 1. Now the standard formula for a horizontal hyperbola is X squared over A squared minus Y squared over B squared equals 1. Now please notice this. Since our A is on the horizontal axis, we therefore placed it under the X squared. And since our vertex is on the horizontal axis, the X squared over A squared is positive. Now let's look at the second case of hyperbola, which is the vertical hyperbola. In the vertical hyperbola, we still have the same parts.
and the equation of the asymptote with a negative slope is y equals negative a over bx, while the one with a positive slope is y equals a over bx. We also have these lengths in a vertical hyperbola. We also remember that the standard formula for a vertical hyperbola is y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1. Now please notice that our vertex is on the vertical axis, that's the reason why our A is under the Y, remember? Y means up or down, and that's the reason why the A squared is located under the Y squared. Now, we also remember that our Y squared over A squared is positive because this is a vertical hyperbola. So these are the parts, the two cases, and the equations of a hyperbola with center at 0, 0 or at the point of origin. Okay, going back to the problem right here, we are given x squared over 9 minus y squared over 25 equals 1. Looking at this, x squared over 9 is the positive part. This means that since that is x right there, this is an example of a horizontal hyperbola. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. Looking at this equation that we have right here, this is an example of an equation that has a center of 0, 0. So I'm going to go ahead and write that right here. So our center is at 0, 0. Since this is the horizontal hyperbola and this x squared over 9 is the positive part, this tells us that this 9 that we have here is our a squared. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. So a squared is equal to 9. This tells us that our a then is a plus minus 3. This also tells us that this is our b squared. So then we can go ahead and say that our b squared is 25. Now, if we square it both sides, our b then is plus minus 5. So we sketch the um, center of the hyperbola. So it is at 0, 0. So I'm going to label this as letter C. Now our A is the distance from the center to the vertex. That's going to be three units. Now since we say this is a horizontal hyperbola, then we go ahead and count three to the left and three to the right. So this is where the um, first vertex is going to sit and the other vertex 1, 2, 3 is going to sit over here. So these are the two vertices of this horizontal hyperbola. So that we go ahead and count 5 up and down for the co-vertices because the B represents the co-vertex. So I go up 5. So this is our co-vertex and the other co-vertex is down below. So this is the other co-vertex. So 5 up and 5 down. So that we go ahead and write the coordinates of the two vertices and the coordinates of the two co-vertices up here. Okay, from here we can go ahead and determine the length of the transverse axis. Remember, transverse axis is the distance from the vertex to the other vertex. We can go ahead and count it or we can use the formula for determining the length of the transverse axis. I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. So the length of the transverse axis is 6. We can count it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Or we can use the formula 2a. So 2 times 3 is 6. Now our length for the conjugate axis would be from the covertex to the other covertex. And the formula for that is 2b because this is b right here. So we double it. That is 2b. I'm going to go ahead and show that work up here. So the length of the conjugate axis is 10. So if we count this, this will be 10 right here. Now we're ready to sketch the rectangle that covers all these four points, the two co-vertices and the two vertices. 
Now we remember that the asymptotes of a hyperbola would be the diagonal of this rectangle that we have here, but this diagonal would extend farther. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw those two asymptotes. The equation of these two asymptotes would be, so it's gonna be y equals, now there's a formula that we can use for horizontal hyperbola that would be b over a or negative b over ax. However, so we don't have to memorize all these formulas. Now look at this, this is the trick. We need to determine the equation for this broken line right here. So this is the first asymptote. So I go ahead to so these are the two points here that we need to look at. So that would be I go up one, two, three, four, five. So I went up five over. I go to the left one, two, three to get this dot. So that is over negative three because I went to the left. So this is the First equation of the asymptote with a negative slope. Now let's determine the equation of the asymptote with a positive slope. So it's pretty much the same thing. That would be, so I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. So that would be y equals, first I go up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I write 5 over, I go to the right. 1, 2, 3. So that's 5 over 3x. So these are the two equations of this asymptote that we have here. So that we can go ahead and start sketching the hyperbola now. So remember that the hyperbola would be connected to the vertex. So these asymptotes that we have here and this rectangle will help us draw the um, hyperbola. So I go ahead and draw that up here. So this is the first branch of the hyperbola and this is the other branch right here. So this, again, this, um, asymptotes will guide us how to sketch the hyperbola. So this is the graph of this equation that we have up there. Now let's determine the focus. In order that we can do that, we're going to use the equation c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And we're going to plug the values of a squared and b squared. So this is how it's going to look like. So the value of C is actually the distance from the center to the focus. So we're going to go left and right 5.83. So what I did here was I used the equation C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And I plugged in the value for A squared and B squared and solve for C. So then we go ahead and write that would be 5.83 should be somewhere around here. So this is our first focus. And the other focus would be 5.83. That should also be somewhere around here. So this is the other focus. So the coordinates of the two foci would be, that's going to be, first, it's this is um, negative square root of 34, 0. And then the other coordinate is positive square root of 34, 0. Again, the square root of 34 is approximately 5.83. 83. Now let's determine the eccentricity of this ellipse. Now we remember that eccentricity has a formula of C over A. So then the eccentricity would be C is square root of 34 and then our A is 3. So this is the eccentricity of this hyperbola. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, and pause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. Looking at this equation, our y squared over 36 is the positive value. So then we go ahead and say, since this is y, this is an example of a vertical hyperbola. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. The center for this hyperbola is at zero, zero. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. That's zero, zero. Since this is a vertical hyperbola, the bottom of the y squared is our a squared. So I go ahead and label that up here. So that is a squared is 36. We get square root for both sides. So that would be plus minus six. 
and then our b squared is 25 so we squared both sides so then that tells us that our b is plus minus 5. so i go ahead and plot that down here so the center is at zero zero and since we say that this is a vertical hyperbola our a is six so that means we go up six and down six and so these are the two vertices that's the first vertex and this is the second vertex down here our co-vertices would be located five to the left and five to the right so this is our first co-vertex and this is the other co-vertex i'm gonna go ahead and write the coordinates of these two vertices and two co-vertices up here now let's determine the length of the transverse axis that is actually the line segment with endpoints are the vertices and the length of conjugate axis is a line segment that has an endpoints of these two co-vertices so i'm going to go ahead and show that work up here okay so we can go ahead and draw the rectangle here that would help us draw the asymptotes and eventually would help us draw the hyperbola okay so let's determine the equation of the asymptotes we're going to start with this line right here so to determine the asymptote you can use the equation since this is a vertical hyperbola that would be y equals a over bx and y equals a over negative bx but in order that we don't have to memorize all those formulas i'll give you a trick so for this line segment right here i go up one two three four five six so that would be y equals six over one two three four five so that would be negative five because i went to the left and that is x and the other asymptote will have an equation of again that's y equals i go up so we're looking at this line right here so one two three four five six over one two three four five that's over five x so these are the equations of these asymptotes so this will be um y equals six over negative 5x and this is y equals 6 over 5x now we're ready to sketch the hyperbola now let's determine the focus of this hyperbola remember focus is having a distance of c that is from the center to the focus is c and we're going to use the equation c squared equals a squared plus b squared i'm going to go ahead and show that work up here So our focus is located 7.81 up and 7.81 down. So that is 5, 6, 7.81. That should be somewhere around here. So this is the first focus. And the other focus would be 5, 6, 7.81. That should be somewhere around here. So that's the second focus. So we go ahead and write the coordinate of the um, foci. That would be zero negative square root of 61 and zero positive square root of 61. now let's determine the eccentricity of this ellipse now the formula for eccentricity is e equals c over a then this tells us that our c value here is square root of 61 and then our a value is six so this is our eccentricity did you get the same answers as this? Yeah! Good. Perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya.